There are some peculiarities there. Uh, dear members of the podium, dear colleagues, uh, uh, well, uh, it's great that our institute, our center provided me with this opportunity to present our experience of treatment of neuroblastoma uh, in high-risk patients in uh, treating them with high-dose chemotherapy as well in this group of patients. As you all know, neuroblastoma is a unique tumor on the one hand. Uh, it's capable of spontaneous regression. On the other hand, uh, it could be refractory, as Alia Viktorovich mentioned in his presentation, and we have to cope with that. Uh, the peculiarity of the tumor is that there are lots of different uh, genetic patterns which impact the course of the disease, and uh, uh, actually we should base on them classification and risk adjusted strategy as well this slide this pie chart was shown here it's risk adjusted strategies it's necessary to include the uh, uh, biology of the tumor clinical factors lab response to induction therapy other methods and uh, to assess minimal residual disease and there were lots of presentations about it as well presently we have been using unfortunately we have been using a stratification for group risks for risk groups uh, used by other sites but we did not modify it we just use it the way it is survival in patients with neuroblastoma in high risk group as has been mentioned before over recent times uh, went through some changes thanks to the implementation of high dose chemotherapy with ontological transportation of stem hemopoietic took uh, cells and here are two randomized studies published in 2005 which show that high dose chemotherapy uh, has got the advantage before the continuation of standard chemotherapy and that work uh, which was the basis for us in our pilot protocol is uh, public the publication of Julia Park and uh, they made a comparison of two patients uh, uh, which went through one or two transplantations and their combinations in combination or without the combination with the monotherapy and those two antibodies. Uh, and tandem transplantation even without immunotherapy is most efficient. And we took this work as the basis for our pilot protocol for treatment patients with high risk group. And also, we have been using the three phases of therapy, induction, consolidation, and post-consolidation and induction. Uh, we include uh, chemotherapeutical stage of treatment, combination of blocks M5 and 6, uh, FRS peripheric uh, stem cells and sanation of the brain. Uh, of the bone marrow in, in enough quantities for tandem transplantation and surgical stage and consolidation. We use high dose chemotherapy with autological transplantation uh, by tending uh, uh, stem cells. We use tandem transplantation as the combination of tablets, combustion, and carboplatin to opposite morphalon. You'll know it. And those patients uh, and those parents. Uh, which uh, say no to tandem transplantation for them. We have Tresulfan Mephalon course. That's what's done at Rogachev Center, which uh, displays uh, its highest safety vis a vis Tresulfan and Mephalon. And some patients can uh, be treated to uh, radiation therapy. As post consolidation, we use immunotherapy in combination with isotinin. As to the number of patients uh, treated uh, in, from high risk group using high dose chemotherapy is rather small, only 10 patients. Uh, age is between 2 to 10 years in most of them. Most of them uh, had amplification of uh, MI genes and uh, bone um, 
uh, marrow lesions. Uh, we had very good partial response in some of them, which might impact the results. I don't show survival curves because uh, there are very few patients. And I'll try to refer to specific cases. First one is here, the child with tandem transplantation. Today we had a presentation when after tandem transplantation, two months after, there was no relapse. Unfortunately, it was not confirmed histologically. But after uh, radiation therapy, we managed to, uh, to achieve regression of the focus and to continue immunotherapy. Fourth patient, which uh, was not treated to immunotherapy because he was a citizen of another country, and we uh, couldn't uh, uh, do uh, conduct this immunotherapy for him. Here are those patients who, due to different reasons, uh, uh, went through one uh, course of high-dose chemotherapy, the first patient who planned uh, for this high-dose uh, tandem transplantation. Uh, due to technical reasons, unfortunately, we couldn't make another transplantation because the package w with peripheral uh, stem cells was damaged. Another patient is the patient with refractory cores uh, or neuroblastoma. And during uh, the first uh, course of high dose chemotherapy, she developed uh, uh, small gut bleeding. Unfortunately, we stopped it, uh, but with subsequent development against massive hemotransfusion, the syndrome of lung lesion. Uh, so in this case, uh, the decision was made not to have second course of high dose chemotherapy and uh, two patients on standard uh, chemotherapy treatment transferred on but soon also in post consolidation stage they were treated to immunotherapy was good, sufficient results in two uh, patients, uh, two more patients. Uh, uh, the one we, who died, I, like I told you, during high dose therapy from resistant septic shock. And second patient, after the first course of high dose chemotherapy, in most likelihood he developed uh, viral infection with uh, advanced uh, uh, deficiency of brain, uh, 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 severe thrombocytopenia, and unfortunately, we couldn't do second uh, high-dose chemotherapy for him and several months after against the backdrop of progression, actually, uh, other lesions developed and the patient died. The toxicity we observed in those chemotherapy courses in remaining patients, it's a small to uh, elevation of LTS uh, within the limits of the second and third degree of neurotoxicity. In the form of uh, very severe uh, damage of the kidneys was nil. All the patients developed neutropenic fever. And the patient who unfortunately died had uh, refractory septic shock. Two patients had pneumonia. The majority of the patients developed stomatitis, first, second grade, and diarrhea in the majority of patients, and one patient had GI bleeding. Great thanks uh, to our team, and we are going to continue using the tandem high-dose chemotherapy in combination with immunotherapy if uh, the patient's uh, family consents to this, and we'll follow up the results and report to you.